For many people, watching the movie Ben-Hur has become an Easter tradition. But there's an amazing story behind the film. As Wendy Griffith shows us, everything about Ben-Hur is larger than life. The 1959 blockbuster Ben-Hur made history with a record 11 Academy Awards. And the 1925 version is making a comeback. What many may not know, however, is that Hollywood didn't create this classic story. The idea came from the best-selling novel, Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ, published in 1880. The book tells the story of a life-altering encounter between a first-century Jewish prince and Jesus of Nazareth. The author behind Ben-Hur is Lou Wallace, a true Renaissance man. He tried different things. He loved to paint, he loved to write, he loved to do creative things. He loved the military. He became a prosecuting attorney. He was in the legislature for a term. Wallace showed a talent for writing early in life. He learned about the Bible while at boarding school. While he didn't care for church, the story of the three wise men fascinated him. Little did I dream then what those few verses were to bring me that out of them, Ben-Hur was one day to be evoked. Wallace's writing took a back seat to other priorities. He fought in the Mexican-American War and the Civil War, becoming the youngest major general in the Union Army. He also married and had a son. Throughout the years, he kept coming back to the biblical account of the three wise men. So he decided to write a magazine article about them. I had no convictions about God, or Christ, I neither believed nor disbelieved in them. Yet when the work was fairly begun, I found myself writing reverentially with awe. Still, Wallace had much to learn about God, as he found out in a chance encounter with a well-known atheist named Robert Ingersoll. Well, Robert Ingersoll knew far more about the Bible. Mm. Hey, you don't preach against something unless you know it. Right. And so he just kind of filleted Lou. The time had come for Wallace to form his own opinion on the subject of religion. My ignorance of it was painfully a spot of deeper darkness in the darkness. I was ashamed of myself. And he realized at that point, I have no business submitting this finished story for publication. I don't know what I was talking about. I need to do the research. I need to learn the Bible. I need to learn the story. Early in his research, Wallace created the fictional character of Judah Ben-Hur, telling how he witnessed the real-life events leading up to the death and resurrection of Christ. Wallace soon began to see God through the eyes of his character. Long before I was through with my book, I became a believer in God and Christ. This is the original manuscript of Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ, 650 pages handwritten in purple ink. When Lou Wallace delivered this to Harper and Brothers back in 1880, they had no idea it was about to make publishing history. The book became the best-selling novel of the 19th century. It has never been out of print. What kind of impact did Ben-Hur have on a post-Civil War country? It just was the right book at the right time. People were looking for ways to reconcile to come together. They were exploring, you know, how can there be a God that would allow a war to happen like this? After its publication, letters flooded in, including one from President James Garfield. He wrote, with this beautiful and reverent book, you have lightened the burden of my daily life. Wallace's own burdens had always been lightened outdoors. He did most of his writing under what came to be known as the Wallace Beech Tree. Its spreading branches droop to the ground, weighed down by their wealth of foliage, and under them I am shut in as by the walls of a towering green tent. That famous Wallace Beech Tree is no longer here. It actually died shortly after Wallace did and was replaced by this bronze statue of him behind me. But right over here is a building that Wallace dreamed about for decades, but never had the resources to build until the success of Ben-Hur. Lou built this as his private retreat. Wallace designed this 19th century man cave where he spent his golden years 
writing every day until his death in 1905. His grave marker is inscribed with a quote from Ben-Hur by one of his beloved wise men. I would not give one hour of life as a soul for a thousand years of life as a man. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Crawfordsville, Indiana.